When wrath is born, reconciliation happens, and reconciliation does not happen to enable you to say, he's not against me, now I can get about my business and do what I like to do without any reference to him. That's not, that's not the point of, of reconciliation. Now, I'll, I'll read Romans 5, verses 9 to 11. Watch this very carefully. Watch the sequence and flow of thought in Romans 5, 9 to 11. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. So now we've got wrath removed. Four, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled, now we've got reconciliation, reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Now watch this, verse 11. More than that, we also rejoice in God. And there I have it. I just want to get people there. I want to get them to verse 11. I don't want them to stop in verse 10 and just celebrate reconciliation, good feelings. Nobody's mad at anybody anymore. And let's just go do stuff. Let's just go live our life. And it feel good. He's not mad at me anymore. I'm just going to live my life. In my con- I'm just so happy he's not mad at me anymore. I'm just going to go live my life. That's not the point. That's not the point at all. The point is... Not only that, we rejoice in God. The mark of the reconciled believer is joy in God. Not just being reconciled with God. God is the gospel in the end. The highest, best good to which all the others are leading, without which all the others would not be good news.